Hello, everyone, and welcome to this COVID legal webinar run by Kaizen Synergy Law Firm. My name is Nihal Samara. I'm the General Counsel and Legal Director here at the law firm Kaizen Synergy, and I'd like to welcome you all to today's session. This session we are going to run in reverse. We're going to cover what is the legal requirements that your agencies working in the not-for-profit and community services sector need to look at in terms of documentation. This is now uh, really important as we move into the next phase of the pandemic management cycle and in particular looking at HR information as well as screening of staff as well too. We will cover um, how to run your COVID vaccine registers, um, looking at reminders um, if uh, and when they need to be reviewed and how you can manage this as well too from your um, each individual agency. Our law firm has been providing advice around the pandemic and also supporting not-for-profit agencies um, over the last 15 years now. Uh, what we have seen as we run these open legal webinars since February last year is a build-up of uh, capacity and knowledge and information being shared across the community services sector. So we welcome all of the agencies that are joining us today. I would also like to acknowledge um, Lynette and Ruby from our Gemba 360 support desk who will actually reach back out to each of you after today's webinar just to make sure that you can access all of the resources that we are using today including also the Gemba 360 dashboard which you will also get access to use as well too. So with it let's move forwards. As always, we pay our respects to the elders past and present upon the lands on which we all meet. While this session is being run by webinar, we do pay our respects to the traditional owners accordingly. So some of the key things um, that we are going to actually look at today is around the HR laws um, for vaccinations and how and what compliance obligations your agency needs to follow. We actually ran a similar webinar about a week ago and then another one previously about two weeks ago what we're finding is that the laws are actually con um, continuously altering and changing and what agencies need to know about um, needs to be updated from week to week and we're going to be running these webinars um, consistently over the next uh, few months just to make sure that agencies are kept up to date and are know and are aware of what your obligations are. So some of these things we're going to look at is vaccine registers, what these look like and also auditing for staff as well too. Equally, the other parts that we are going to cover off is um, some of the core questions like what if employees don't want to be vaccinated? What if support workers or services that you deliver to clients ask for only people that uh, are vaccinated to actually um, be um, be seen by, by, by your clients and how this works and what you need to also look at as well too. So we'll be covering these off. I encourage you to answer questions as we go through today's webinar. You can do that using the question panel on your dashboard as well too. And if you do have any questions, by all means, post those in to your dash, into your dashboard and we'll get to them as we go through um, this session. With it, just do some of housekeeping items to start off with. These sessions are all recorded and you can view any of our past webinars directly on the YouTube channel um, of the Gemma 360 YouTube channel or even on our website as well too. And you can go there by going to kaizensynergy.com. You can view um, obviously some of the agencies that we support through this pandemic and have used the Gemma dashboard. This is where you will log into the dashboard that I'll show you as well too that will have 
collection of all of the resources and they are being made available to all attendees as well. And if you wanted to obviously visit the Gemba 360 YouTube channel, you can have a look at all of the past webinars from the pandemic that are also being made freely available as well too. Now on this, one of the big issues that agencies have is how on earth do you manage all of your legal compliance documentation and what do you actually need to do? And I'm going to cover this off for all agencies right now. And we've got a lot of agencies that are joining us um, again from last week um, and we're delighted to see you back again. So with it, one of the things that we find with agencies, and let me be quite clear about this, whether you're a small not-for-profit agency or a very large agency, the COVID safe legal documentation uh, for your volunteers or staff is just a massive challenge that people are really struggling with. And as I've mentioned, it doesn't matter if you're a small not-for-profit um, bookshop that you're delivering services to, if you're a large um, community health service based in Victoria with the services in New South Wales and the likes, um, whether you're a women's health refuge service as well too, um, whatever type of agency, and we've got some rescue services and food services joining us today. Um, again, one of the big challenges that people have um, is is on um, is on um, how to manage your documentation that you have, particularly from a COVID safe and HR personnel point of view. So let me run through some of the core things and then we're going to go back and have a look at the legal obligations. Now you will get access to the login on the dashboard, which you can click on here. It'll take you to this big blue button for those agencies that are joining us for the first time. Ruby and Lynette will actually give you a direct call today to walk you through exactly what I'm going to show you. Now, this is our um, dashboard login that we use for our demo. You'll have your username, which is just your email address, and your password will be sent across to you. Once you log in, you'll see this space here. Now, what we're finding is the challenge for agencies, as I've mentioned, and I'll go back over the legal areas of what we're looking at, is around vaccine registers, screening um, staff for COVID to make sure that what we call their daily attestation forms are being done, and you've got that information in one spot. So let's have a look at this right now. So firstly, vaccine registers of how this looks. Essentially, you can log in. You'll be given this login information. You've got access to this, and we've got a number of Gemba administrators that are also joining us today, which I welcome as well. Now, on this, you can go through and add your personnel into the system. So if we wanted to have a look at this, and I'll do this right now for you, we can go through and click on the PIM space, and I'm gonna add somebody in. So let's do this from scratch. I'm gonna add a volunteer that we have on here. And in this case, I'm gonna call this person, Dennis, and I'm gonna put his name as Dennis Flintstone, okay? And Dennis Flintstone is a volunteer that we have. So I'm gonna select them here, and I can simply select volunteer, and I can click on save. So what I want to do here is actually ensure that we keep a vaccine register of um, Dennis's um, vaccine status and also ensure that we don't miss, let's say, the second dose for Dennis and make sure that he has, um, he goes and gets it as well too. So in this case, what we're going to do, and I can see a few questions coming up around permission, around keeping the vaccine registers, um, and I'll come to that as well too. I wanted to show you how this actually works and how you can manage this. So the legal part is one part, how you actually use it from an operational point is the other. So now what we've done quite simply is gone in, we've clicked on the HR space, I've added Dennis by clicking on the add button and created Dennis's profile. What I am going to do 
is set up, set this up. So this way we have Dennis's information. We're going to add in, in this case, let's say his vaccine register. I'm going to mark that we've just had it today. And the next dose that we want to have is in three months time. So we're going to go June, July, August, September, and he needs to have it by the 17th. And once I save this around this, what this will do is create this notification for me and I can run a report for Dennis anytime I need to. Now, let's say I also want to have Dennis show me his card around this as well too. So from here, what I can do is I want to make sure that we've actually got this on file. So I can literally go in, I can choose it, and this system is run by mobile base as well too. So I can actually pick up the vaccine card, which I've got here, and I've got a photo of it, and I can say this is a copy of the um, COVID card, okay? And I can then click on this button. And what this does is then gives me who actually added this in, and also if I wanted to edit that, I can. But what I do want to see is a copy of this as well too. So if I wanted to view it, I can go back and do it. And essentially, here it is here. And I've got the copy of that. And this is just one that we found on, um, on the internet. And it's an example of one that we have. So it's no one's privacy in terms of what's there. Now, if I had a large number of volunteers, essentially I can go through and you've got access to do this, essentially go up and actually add in your profile. And you can do this on this. And all this information is for your agency to essentially use. What it does from a legal point of view is gives you the space to be able to keep all of your registers in one spot. If you also had um, members or board members, you can do the same thing. So in this case, I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. I can go in, I can click on the ad space, and in this case, I'm gonna say, let's say I'm gonna create um, Brittany, um, and let's say Brittany Flintstone was another person, but in this case, Brittany was a um, board member. Okay, so I'm gonna keep that information here and I'm gonna save that. So I've created Brittany now. I can go in, I can also update Brittany's contact details or the likes, or I can give Brittany access to this. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing. So in this case, I'm gonna to go to qualifications and we've got the license here. I'm gonna select this, okay, and now we've got the vaccine register. I've got the information again, Brittany's gone in today and we're going to select the um, July, August, September in three months time, etc. And the good thing about this is that a notification will come out to remind us that, hey, Brittany needs to go in for it in three months time. So this way, as we go through, we're keeping a register of all of my volunteers that I have. Now, one of the big questions that we've got asked over the past um, few weeks now is, look, I'm a small agency, I'm not a big health service, do I still need to keep this information? And with a, some of this stuff is now important that you have some of this information and people feel safe to be able to keep this information within your agency. And especially as a not-for-profit service, you need to look at, well, how do we meet our work health and safety obligations? Um, what if people decide that they don't want to um, have the vaccine, well then in this case, we have the ability to actually under, let's say personal details, essentially add in comments and say, look, this person um, decided to not have the vaccine because of medical reasons. And you can actually attach um, the doctor's certificate, if you like, or doctor's letter directly here. And this is kept as a file directly for your HR personnel information. And you can see that you can very quickly run reports across all of this info very, very quickly to see who's got what and when. And it ensures that you've got your vaccine registers very, very quickly up to date. And I'm gonna run this in reverse and show you the legal sides of, these, of all of these decisions and why this stuff is so important to actually see. Now we have got a couple of questions from this um, asking people, and this is a great question, thank you, Gina, just saying, 
Hi, Nihal. From a legal point of view, can an organization require employees to disclose information regarding their vaccine? Um, and yes, you can, Gina, around that. Um, we are going to cover the legal side and the and the decisions around this. Um, part of this, especially where you're delivering services to vulnerable people um, that have been identified as vulnerable groups, it is now important that you look at some of these requirements that you need to meet. That could be if you work in Aboriginal services, disability services, obviously aged care, quarantine hotels, uh, food, respite, emergency services, all of these agencies and there's a bigger list as well too, you do need to look at, well, can you, um, you need to keep your, not only employees, but also we've advised agencies for volunteer information as well too, where they are providing that face-to-face -face contact with client groups that, as you mentioned, you need to consider. Also, I'll go one step further on this, Gina, and actually look at saying, well, if people decide not to have the vaccine as well too, then again, you need to keep this information and um, some place around why that decision has been made. And you'll see from a legal point that we will cover off, some of these include for um, that there might be um, religious grounds, medical grounds, people may well be pregnant as well too. Um, and for these types of reasons, they may not be able to have the vaccine. And we're now seeing even in the last 24 and 48 hours on the news that both Pfizer and AstraZeneca have also put in new guidelines. So the TGA is actually issuing new guidelines on why people may not be able to have one or the other. And this will actually impact on um, decisions that your employees and also volunteers may also have. Now, on this, so if we look at this from the HR point of view, the other part that we also need to consider is, well, how do we also then make sure that our services remain safe? And I'll come back to this from a legal point and show you the guidelines on this. But the other thing that you should be looking at having your staff and volunteers do is use what we call a daily assessment form. And in a number of states and territories, state governments have actually issued directives around what they've called as daily attestations. For example, in Victoria, daily attestation forms have been in place since September, where agencies have been directed to ensure that they actually um, screen staff and that staff actually provide what I'll call is a um, health type statutory declaration that actually says, do you have any COVID symptoms? And that includes answering questions like, have you been in close contact with a confirmed case? Um, have you visited any outbreak locations? Have you had any tests in the past 14 days? Um, as well as have you had any symptoms? Now we've seen, and this is one of the forms that are for Victorian based agencies. If you're based in New South Wales or Queensland or WA or South Australia or Tassie or the likes, Northern Territory, you'll find that you have a specific form that's related to your agency. And again, this is not dependent on size of agencies. So where we've seen, for example, that um, there has been outbreak locations being updated. And we've seen in some states as well too, and recently in New South Wales as well and Victoria, where these outbreak locations have increased exponentially over a 24 hour period. So what we have done is actually link this form to a public case alerts as well too, to ensure that essentially you're actually seeing what the current exposure sites are being. I can see that there's a few questions coming up around this and people asking around um, how these apply. Let me come up to this as well too and actually answer these questions for you. So we can see with this the need for essentially um, daily attestation forms that people actually have in place. And I'll just walk you through exactly what people need to do and how important this actually is.
So within this, once staff complete this form or volunteers complete this form before seeing your clients, it should only take a few minutes for them to do. But once they save it, what this does is links it back and we'll just bring this up because Jemba's just uh, had a look at this. Here we go. Um, bring this up around this. And what you can actually see from here is essentially the view of the forms and what is required for people to complete. Now, why this is so important around this, and I'll just stress this again, is that people need to essentially look at providing your safe service to the clients that you actually support. And from here, once they click on the link of what's actually shown, here it is here in front of you now, that you can see a register on the date and the time that they've also done it. And it means that as you go through, you're meeting your work health and safety obligations around this. And I've got the date and the time of when I've completed this last, uh, and essentially, and it's only, and a few people have just asked us, do we have to do this every day? Or is it something that we do when people show up to work? Essentially, what you're using here is showing any time that people actually show up to work and it allows you to manage it from and meet your work health and safety obligations. So that is around the system that you've actually got access to. It is something from a legal compliance point of view that has worked incredibly well. Now let's cover off the legal compliance obligations. And we've got a few questions around this. Yes, um, Ruby and Lynette will give you a call back specifically on each of these items. They will walk you through how to log in. They'll show each of you where your resources actually are, which will be in the HR module space. They'll show you how you can add a person, volunteer or staff member into it as well too. And once that is essentially done, you can then have a look at each of the profiles that you want to see, that be that under the volunteers registers and also how to update your own vaccine registers um, under this tab here and view that as well. They will also walk you through the access to the assessment, COVID daily assessment form, which is again available for you. And each of those two things, they will give you a call back straight after this webinar for all attendees and actually follow this through for you. Now, let's have a look for the legal background around this of why this is so important. So part of this and the work that Kaizen Synergy does is not just give you the legal advice around it, but what are the systems that you need in place to manage all of this information? And I can see that there's a few questions coming through. We've had a look at the dashboard and the registers. I can't stress that this is important for yourselves to meet your work health and safety and public health obligations as well. In terms of vaccine registers, yes, this is something that agencies are encouraged to also use because it'll actually position you to ensure you meet your work health and safety and public health legal obligations as well. You can also ask, people for information on um, evidence that they have had the vaccine, as well as also reasons that they might not have had the vaccine as well. And it may well look something like this. Now I can see that there are a few questions coming through, which I will just open and address now for you. So people have just asked, is this something that we can ask our employees and volunteers? Um, what happens if they um, refuse to give this information? And also, can we give them access to update their own information as well? And the answer is yes to, yes to all of those. Now, one of the things that I will just mention, I'll come to this as well too, as we go through, is the, what we say is, from a legal point of view, it's important that you keep records of the discussions that you've actually had in place because a lot of these discussions that are happening 
around COVID is around ensuring that people have the right information at the right time. And these may actually change for you. And let me show you what I mean by that. So with it, let's have a look at what your legal obligations are. What if a client only wants to be seen by a vaccinated staff member or volunteer? So firstly, there are a number of arguments being made here. And this is some of the questions that we have in terms of unpacking this. And I'm going to go through some of the legal challenges that people are seeing. Firstly, there is a need for agencies to ensure that staff and clients are safe uh, from the services that they deliver. And what I mean by that is that they're not being exposed unnecessarily to risks uh, or that the risks are reasonable in the, in the circumstance. Secondly, there is a need for agencies to minimise liability from COVID-19 outbreaks in the workplace where not everyone is vaccinated. So essentially, what we're, the question that we're looking at here is, is a mandatory vaccination policy a reasonable practical measure for your agencies. And in some cases, this may well be the case where you are delivering services to a vulnerable part of the actual community itself, or you are coming into contact with this. So over the next few weeks, what we are going to be looking at is a range of core things that your agency needs to consider. We run these back to basic sessions around policy information and risk management and risk registers. Today, we're looking at HR management and review cycles of your documentation you need to keep. This will include some of the recruitment processes and other broader HR lifecycle information. But at this stage, we are focusing specifically on COVID documentation. As I've mentioned, there are directives coming out of state and Commonwealth governments around attestation registers. These attestation registers is about ensuring that your staff or volunteers have the um, safety around ensuring that they are free from COVID symptoms. This is more than just using QR code check-in services. This is about providing a daily statutory declaration for a better word that they haven't come into close contact and they have no symptoms being presented and these are the some of the directives coming out of state and commonwealth departments now to answer gina's question going back um, can an employer require an employee to be vaccinated now currently there are no laws or public health orders in australia that require people to be vaccinated. However, there may well be specific circumstances that are relevant to the services that you deliver that may allow you to do that. So you can, as part of this, as an employer, actually have lawful and reasonable direction to have employees comply with the order to be vaccinated and also provide as a subsequent part of that evidence of their vaccination itself. It also means that if an employee refuses to be vaccinated, what happens in that circumstance? Well, essentially what we've said is a lot of people will say, um, well, is there any grounds for dismissal or stand downs? What we've actually said to agencies is the first step is to actually ask your employer or volunteer to explain their reasons for refusing the vaccination. And those discussions keep a record of, and when I say keep a record of, this is why I've said at the start, use platforms like this where you can actually go in and you can essentially record what has actually gone on. And you've got this information at hand to then say, right, I've actually met with this uh, volunteer or this staff member, and I'm actually going to keep a record of what they've actually said to me. And here it is here, what they've actually said to me and what their decision is. So actually writing in their decision to not have the vaccine is this. And you've started to keep a like a file record of exactly what has gone on and why. And essentially this will guide your decisions as we move through this. Now, stand downs are unlikely to be an available option if an employee refuses direction to be vaccinated. And stand downs can only occur in certain circumstances. But essentially, you can require, an, uh, an employer can require evidence about why they've refused this. And this can be um, that they 
um, either have a medical condition, they are pregnant, or they've got some other um, religious grounds or the likes that may well actually uh, prevent them from actually having the vaccine in the first place. It also means that you can't, ref uh, an employee can't refuse to attend your workplace or volunteer because a co-worker isn't vaccinated against the coronavirus. And the reason for that is that there is no public health order preventing attendance from this to occur as well too. And essentially what then comes out of it, which we've then been asked is, well, can an employer actually take disciplinary action if an employee refuses to be vaccinated? Now, what this is, is that if there is a specific law or repeated reasonable direction, then you can take disciplinary action in certain circumstances. But it is something that you need to carefully consider. And as I've mentioned, there are anti-discrimination laws now that are coming into place for all agencies that are joining us today. And it is important that you be aware of this. Now, some agencies have just, we've just uh, been asked a few questions around this to say, well, can we actually have a policy around this and what do you suggest? Absolutely. A policy is the best way to go to actually manage this and actually outline your current position. We do have templates that you can use and actually identify specific population groups that can also be covered by this as well. One of the big things that is going to be critically important is your HR compliance registers because you can see whatever size agency you are, whether you're a small agency or a large agency, you need to keep this information um, not only safe, but also you need to consider exactly what you're looking at in terms of meeting your requirements. Now with it, as I've mentioned, Gemba is a mobile dashboard that allows you to get access to this. You can open this out to all of your volunteers and staff as well too. And with it, um, it is something that you do have access with today. As I've mentioned, I've shown you this at the start, you will get access to this, Ruby and Lynette will give you a call back shortly around this. Um, and if they can't, they'll drop you an email to ensure that, that they catch up with you today as well. With it, while recommendations are quite simple, um, review your audits and your registers for staff, volunteers, board members and the likes, ensure you have a policy document covering COVID safety and vaccination and looking at when, how and what people may be exempt and also updating your privacy policy as well too. Now our support desk is available for any questions around this works as well too. You can contact us on 1300 360 360 or email us at support at gemba360.com. I will say that it is open for yourselves to actually use. We will stop the recording here. Um, and if you do have any questions, we can stay on the line and answer any questions that you might have. I will again just mention that Ruby and Lynette will reach out to you directly today, straight after this webinar. So if you do have any questions, you can ask them um, and they will be there to support you as well too. If you are listening to this and watching this recording after today's live session, by all means, and you need access to the legal resources and the likes, please contact us on 1300 360 360 or email us at support at gemba360.com.